So previous list on uh, top five Linux distros was quite popular. And this time I've decided to do something different. Instead of telling you what are the worst uh, operating systems and distros out there, like everyone else seems to be doing, I've decided to rather focus on Linux distributions for and from grace. Some of these are my personal opinion, and some of this I get from if you read reviews online compared to the time those distros first came out to how they are perceived now. A lot of this uh, is aimed at the home users. Some distros have moved on from being desktop to more server-based OSs. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, something to take a look at. So, coming in with number six, of course, is Peppermint OS. Peppermint OS, of course, a uh, Debian-based uh, system. A couple of years ago, it was incredibly popular, was really cut down and lightweight and speedy and offered a couple of really more sane defaults uh, when it came to using it. And many times it was very popular online, on forums, no powered machines, and it was great. Unfortunately, a couple of years ago, uh, Denisha Crater sadly passed away and Peppermint OS stopped. In recent times, of course, they have uh, revived it, and it's back. Recently, they did a new release, but unfortunately, if you read a lot of reviews online and watch the videos, a lot of this statement seems to be Peppermint OS isn't the same as it used to be, and uh, why bother with it now? Really sad uh, to see that, and that's why it landed up as number six on the list. Number five, Elementary OS. Yes, I know it's still out and still being created at the moment, but you must remember a few years ago when Elementary OS came out, especially with the pattern on desktop, it offered something back then that Linux struggled with, which was a complete cohesive environment. Whether your note-taking app, your music app, your app store, the whole desktop had a real Mac type of feeling to it. It was very popular and used by a lot of uh, people. I knew there was, you could even at a time get it pre-installed on laptops. So you can still now. But the point being, it was the darling of the Linux world. I was going to answer the questions of why can't you have a complete experience on Linux? Why can't you have the same type of style throughout the system? Sadly, of course, uh, this Ubuntu-based OS, uh, one of, there was controversy amongst the founders, one of the founders left, uh, the other one stayed behind and continued working on the system. There was quite a delay between releases 6 and 7, and during that time, a lot of uh, following left and moved on to other distros. And now that uh, other interfaces such as GNOME, KDE, etc. have all become more coherent in a singular experience. Some of uh, elementary races unfortunately lost his age, so that is a pity. Number four, Sonus uh, OS. Yeah, there was a time you couldn't go anywhere on the internet, and someone was going to tell you about Sonus OS, this independent rolling release distribution that had Steam in its recodes, had a lot of popular software, even if it was small and not that supported back in the day. But everyone just loved it. Great community, great developers, you name it. It was, you know, the new up and coming distro that was just going to revolutionize the world. And then more controversy. One of the founders left, the releases on time became slower and slower to be released. Until at one point, people thought that it was completely and utterly dead. Recently, of course, they've been making a couple more releases. But apart from time having ticked, people being uncertain about its future and some comments on where they are planning to make additional changes to it, it's not what it once was. And basically, it just seems to have been overtaken by other distributions, which is a real pity. Uh, number three, now I know this could upset quite a couple of people, especially really hardcore people, but unfortunately, uh, day two, 
Linux many years ago was the number one Linux OS, especially if you were a past user. Uh, a lot of the time, the elite would tell you, you haven't used Linux until you've used Gentoo. And that's what it was. Had possibly one of the best wikis, all the information on the wiki was out there. And you would spend hours and hours compiling the software so it would be faster on your machine. Because you have to remember when this was popular, hardware was a lot slower and compiling software for your personal workstation did make it faster. Unfortunately, they lost their wiki and didn't have all the backups for it. So the wiki basically stopped being as popular as it was. Hardware, of course, has gotten a lot faster. So pre-compiled packages now, binaries, isn't really much of a difference between the two. As well as it's uh, to install Gen2 has continued to remain the Gen2 way, which a lot of users of today aren't that fond of. Even Arch Linux has got a friendly installer these days, which is really sad. J2 no longer seems to be the elite distro anymore, more replaced by Arch and Nix, and that's a pity. Perhaps it'll one day be popular again, but slowly but surely it just seems to be coming less and less talked about. And number two, uh, which is a bit of a you know, two sided coin, this one. So, when Ubuntu came out in 2004, if I remember, that's a long time ago, it was the dialect for many years. And what made Ubuntu a dialect was one, you could get it for free, and who doesn't like things for free? But you must remember broadband at the time and internet across the world was a lot slower. So, instead of spending hours having to download a Linux distro, you could go out to a website, request as many CDs or DVDs. I'd send it to the post for free. And they did that across the world. Whether you were in a third uh, world country or first world, it didn't matter. That sent it to you. And of course, it helped with adoption. And Ubuntu was basically Debian Linux that uh, was seen defaults and easier to install. And of course, what made it really great was in those days, uh, Linux and graphics was a little bit of an issue. So of course, it tended to work out the box. You couldn't go anywhere without Ubuntu was the number one. Unfortunately for the desktop user over the years, it's kind of, it's lost its shine. The company behind it realized that you can't really make money on desktop Linux. And they moved it to the server space. And where's the server space? It's one of the most popular server-based OSs now. However, in the desktop, uh, it's had recent controversies. Uh, not uh, to mention Snap Packages, Unity, and other really strange decisions has made it lose its shine, especially on the desktop world. Still a great OS, still awesome on the desktop, but it just doesn't seem to have the same love it was it once did. Pretty Ubuntu, what on earth happened? Number one, I... Uh... There's a tie here between Red Hat and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Many, many years ago, uh, Red Hat used to actually have the Linux available on the desktop, Red Hat Linux. And it was very popular. Every single distribution at the time wanted to be Red Hat. And we're talking about 98, 99, early 2000s. It was just a great uh, OS, very popular, but... Uh, like uh, Ubuntu, they opted to also focus on the enterprise market, and they did very well. On the desktop side, they opted to um, leave folks behind with Fedora. And on the enterprise side, you got Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Really great, really powerful enterprise system, and the default standard of enterprise OS is out there, especially in the Linux space. However, in recent years, Barring what uh, changes have done on how to get the source RPMs, uh, how they uh, were at once considered the series of CentOS and then changed uh, how CentOS is delivered, has uh, caused quite an uproar in the open source community and Red Hat Enterprise doesn't seem to be held with the same love as it once was, which is a real pity. I'm talking about all of this, 
last but not least, a bonus one. CentOS. Ah, uh, CentOS. The Community Enterprise Operating System. So in case you didn't know, CentOS was Red Hat Linux available for everyone. Red Hat brand being removed and as close to Red Hat as possible. Community loved enterprise distro and used it for everything from setting up environments, uh, dev environments, a lot of times it was used in production and a lot of users either used it at home for something extremely stable or to use it to study for Red Hat exams. Really, CentOS was very much loved amongst the community but recent changes after a Red Hat dot changed the lifespan of CentOS 8 and now changed it from a point release to rolling-ish type. It's lost its shine in, for a lot of people. Some high corporations still use CentOS, but generally in the community, if you talk about CentOS, it doesn't get the same recognition that it once did. Replaced these days by things like uh, Rocky and Alma Linux. So folks, uh, thank you for watching. Leave your comments below. It would be great to hear uh, if you agree or disagree with this list. And as always, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.